Hi, Rich Spazano here from Digitally Feelers. Um, I haven't been on in a while. Ragweed is getting to me, and I hope you'll excuse my voice. Sometimes it goes in and out, so that's why I haven't done anything. Today, I am going to take you through a real-life scenario. Uh, my sister is an artist, and she always sends me pictures like this one. This is her rescue dog. She does all kinds of different work. She does abstracts, rescue dogs, whatever. But she, people who adopt rescue dogs, they want paintings of them. And here's another one. So this is the way she sends them to me. Basically, she does her artwork and takes a photo. And then I have to put it on, on her website. Now, I used to use Dreamweaver and Photoshop, which were Adobe products. But now I, use, I no longer use Adobe products. So I am going to show you from start to finish how I did this. Now I've already done this one and this one and what I can do is I can show you on her website. Uh, her website is Tree Tales Creation and this is what they look like. I can click it and that's the second one and you see how nice and straight it is. So um, that's what I had to do. I had to straighten it out and resize it plus give her an original copy straightened out so she can use it for printing with high quality print. So that's what I'm about to show you right now. So let's get started. Okay, since I did this one, I'm just getting rid of it. I'm not gonna save it. And this one is this, I believe, and I'll get rid of that one. And this is the one we're going to be working on. Now, she told me the size, she told me the name. Um, so this is Tanner and it's acrylic on canvas and it's 16 by 20. So what I need to do first is straighten this out uh, uh, so it's not out of perspective and it's not perfect perspective so I have to do it a different way. So just in case I'm doing control or command J because I don't want to ruin the original yet. So now the first thing I need to do is bring in guidelines and you need to have rulers to bring in guidelines. So make sure you have your rulers set up. If you do Control or Command R, it turns the guidelines on and off. So I'm doing that. And I think I also want to put inches just in case. I prefer inches to see what I'm working with. And so now I'm going to drag from the ruler. I'm going to drag the, high, the, the widest point right there. And I will do it again on this side. And I'll bring one down from the top and to the widest point there. And I'll bring one down to the highest point here. The bottom would be, I'm sorry, the lowest point. And I want to get a close-up of this. So I'm doing Control or Command Plus. You can use your mouse wheel um, to move around. Or you can use the space bar with your hand. And I want these pretty close. So I'm going to... Canvases are a little off on the edges so sometimes I so sometimes I put it a slightly slightly amount in like you see how there's a bump there so I make sure that that bump is not being part of that and I want to make sure the corners are good this one looks pretty good maybe a tiny bit more in I'll do that and then I will move to here and I'll go to the topmost point and I think we're good at the widest point here. You always have to get the, the widest points to work with. So that's where we're going from there. Okay, so now that we know the corners are good, we select the layer and we go to uh, Perspective Tool and we can turn the grid off and we start moving this. Make sure this is on destination. We start moving this up to where we can get it as close as possible to meet with the corners and we got to bring this one down here something like that and then this one over this way and be careful when you move one side that means another side might move also so you got to keep playing back and forth look at your corners and let's move this one back down a little bit and get it as close as you can to all four corners. You don't want anything outside of the um, guides, if possible anyway. 
Sometimes it's always better to go a tiny, tiny bit in. I mean, um, let the guides be a little inside the whole line. So this whole line is inside. It's not a perfect thing. You could really, really be perfect. But in most cases, because the edge of the canvas is wrapped around, it really doesn't matter when it comes to the picture that goes on the web. Uh, you can get it, you just keep working on it and you get it as close as possible. And I think that's pretty good. Be careful not to hit another tool because that will just eliminate all this. You can use your space bar and you can like um, use your keyboards to get closer if you want, but do not hit another tool because as soon as you do, it will no longer work, you know? So I think we're good and I'm going to say apply. And now that we applied it, the picture is straightened out. So now what we want to do is we want to turn on snapping again. So we hit the magnet and now we'll go to the crop tool. And since it's snapping is on, it will snap right to those guides. So let's snap that to the guides. <clears throat> and that's perfect. And we say apply. So now this is the exact picture that we th that we want. And um, so we first we want to make sure this is the original size. And it's very important not to ruin the original size. So what we can do is we can file, export. And I would export it still as a JPEG. I would actually go high. Actually, in reality, it, 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 most people want JPEGs, but I would really personally do a PDF because a PDF would be perfect for print. So you can just export that either way. So you can export it as a JPEG or a uh, high quality. You can export it as a PNG, which is also excellent quality. So that's the way I would export. Uh, and that's the picture I would send back to the artist. And that, per that person can keep that on record if she ever needs to have it sent to a printer to do, to do printouts. So, that, so that's the first part. Now the second part is I need to get this to fit on her website. Now in this particular case, it, it has to go here. I have it set up where the, hot, the widest point is going to be 450, whether it's the width or the height, because we want it to fit on this whole site and we want it to, the size to be medium. So if I need the site, uh, the widest point to be 450, I'm going to have to change the size of this document and at 72, of course. So now what I'll do is I'm going to go document, resize, take away this uh, lock, and the widest part would be this number right here because it's the longest. And um, I want pixels actually. And the, the highest amount of pickles, pixels, I'm sorry, the highest amount, actually, no, I'm going to leave the lock on. And I'm sorry about that. The highest pixels is going to be 450, so 450. And then that makes the width automatically change, and I'm hitting resize. And now I'm going to do file, export. Now, this is for web, so I want it to be a JPEG, and I want it to be medium quality, and I will hit export. And now, because I know the name, it'll help me later on. The name of the artwork is Tanner. And I know it's acrylic. And I'm going to put C-A-N-V maybe for canvas. And then I'm going to put a dash. And I know it's 16 by 20. And I have that because later on, it'll make it easier for me when I go to put it on the web to put the description. And that's the description she gave me. So I am going to save this, and I'm not saving it right now. I, I'm going to keep it here. I didn't put the canvas part, but I know it is. So I'm just going to cancel that, but it's already saved here. So let's cancel that. And remember, rem if you want to save the original in an Affinity Photo file, you have to undo or save in advance because we just shrunk this down. The document, remember we shrunk this down to three something? So if you want to save the Affinity file itself, which I never need to, because I can just pull in the original and do it, uh, you, would, uh, you, can do, you can do undo, which is Control or Command Z, and then the resize document brings it back to where it was. But I'm going to cancel. 
So now that's the affinity photo part. Now what I used to, so I finished this video and decided I wanted to add some more to it to be more accurate. So what I did is I stuck this in the middle before my final uh, goodbye. So that's why this is here. So if it looks a little different, you'll understand why. So one of the things I need to know is I have this photo, but there's so much more to it. So what I want to do is with snapping on, I'm going to take the rectangle marquee tool and I'm going to create a box right around this photo. And then I'm going to do Control or Command J, which will duplicate this photo. And then deselect, and I'm going to actually delete these. So now they're completely deleted. And I need to make sure that this is an actual 16 by 20, because it may not be perfect when we use the perspective tool. Uh, we just wanted to get it squared off when we used a perspective tool. So we want this to be 16 by 20. One way to do this is select that picture and I'm going to go to crop and I'm going to do resample and I'm going to resample this as 16 by 20 and I can see the difference right there of what I need to do. So I could, um, instead of 72, I can make this really big, 300, because that's where we want it for print. And I'm going to say apply. Well, now what we can do is we know that this is a little out of proportion. So we raise that here and raise that there. And now it's in the perfect proportion of a 16 by 20. So that is exactly what a 16 by 20 would look like in the perfect proportion. Then we can shrink it down to the 450 width like we did before. I want to put a copyright notice on. So all I do is this and Alt G and then Grace Spazano. Shrink it down to size, whatever size we need. And then I would go to effects and I'll give it a bevel and emboss. i uh, go to emboss actually. And let's see how much we want. Let's say like that. And then I'll move the opacity down like that and close. So that's how we do it. And that's the better proportion. But I'm going to cancel. So now that's the affinity photo part. Now what I used to have to do is go another Adobe product, which was Dreamweaver. And Dreamweaver is a great program. But I'm not, I refuse to pay Adobe these subscription fees. I feel if I purchase software, it should be mine to use and to keep. So I've found open source ways of doing this. So I'm going to close Affinity. Actually, I don't even need to. I'm just going to open what's called Blue Griffith. And here's Blue Griffith. And I'll put this full screen now. And I'll say File, Open Recent. And this is the one we're going to work with. Now, I'm going to scroll down to where I want to put it. I want to put it in this section. Uh, so I'm going to click on this. See down here on the lower part of the screen, it shows you where I'm at. So if I click here, it is showing I'm on an image. But above that image, one which is the next section, I want to click here and make sure I got all of this selected. And then I'm going to go to the source. And the source is telling me that this goes here. So I'll click here. And you see it goes from here to here. So I am going to select all of that. And it's coding. I know it's coding and some of you people don't want to code. But some of you do need to do this. So I'm going to do Control Command C, which is copy. And then I'm going to hit the Enter. I'm going to go below that. And I'm going to Control Command V. And what I'll do now is when I go back here, there's two of the same. So we know that we want to put um, this one we want to call Tanner. It's the wrong picture, but let's get the information in. And she told me acrylic on canvas, and it's 16 by 20. So since these were the same, because others may be different, these were the same, then everything works here. So now I need to select Tanner. Okay? Not Tana. I need to select the old picture and go to the source file. And see, that's the line where the old picture is. 
And you see that was Archie 16 by 20 acrylic. And if I remember right, let me make sure I got it right. I'm going to go to my sites, tree tails, and I have it in gallery two. And I have it as, I'm just going to click once and again, and I'm going to copy that exact name. So control command C, and then I'll go back to here and I'll cover this up and I'll do, oops, not all, it has to be all the name and I will do that and I'll do control or command V and now I should be able to, if this is all right, have Tana and I could test this so I can go right here. Let me save that first and now I'm going to go here where the little window is. It says preview and browser. I have it set up for Chrome. You could set it up for anything you want. I just have to click that and now I go down to the bottom and there's Tanner. So, and sometimes the sizes may be a little different because I was more concerned with making sure both of them are not higher than 450 so they all fit. But sometimes the height and weight is a little bit different and that happens, but that's okay. As long as they're fitting on the screen. So I can do that. And notice also if I shrink this, well, they all go into one, so on a smartphone, it works very well. And why didn't I just drag in the picture? Well, it seems that you have to know a little bit about HTML. So if I went to here, if I dragged in a new picture, what it would do, let me go back to the source where this picture is. What it would normally do, it would put a picture in and put the height and width of the original picture. Well, I don't want the height and width of the original picture because then when you shrink it down, it, it comes into very weird situations. And so we have a style set for width 100%. So what happens is in that box, we know no matter what size this photo is, 100% can only fit this width so it doesn't pass this part of the screen and get all jumbled up. So it's a little technical and you really don't have to know that part. All you have to know is just replace the file, one file name with another file name and then you have it. And then the last thing you need to do, and I don't know if anyone wants to go this far, is you have to upload it. And again, I used to upload it with um, Dreamweaver, but I don't do that anymore. So another free, uh, this by the way, Blue Griffin is free. So I'm going to discard these changes. Okay, never mind. I'll just hit save. Okay, and we can get rid of this. And now what I'll do is I'm going to open another program, and it's free called FileZilla. So now I go to the host, and I have TreeTales all set up in here with their information. And I'll just say connect, and we're in connect. I could put the HTML file that I just updated in here, but what would happen is it would open up and it would not have the picture that I just fixed. So make sure to first go to images and find the images. I've already done this, but I'm just going to show you. And I'm in rescue two. Make sure you take that picture you just created and put it and you drag that over to the side. Because if you don't, when you open up the HTML for Rescue 2, that picture will not be in there. So that's the first thing you do. And the second thing you do is then you go back again, one more back, and then we put the Rescue 2 HTML file in here, which is here right now. So that is how you do that. And I think that's showing you everything at this point. So we now have a perfect... If we go to Tree Tales, which I have here in real life, treetalescreations.com, and I hit Rescue 2, and I slide to the bottom. Here I did it in reverse because that was the original. I wanted to show you how to get this picture here, but now it'll, everything works fine. And all three pictures that were given to me in very crooked way are now there. So I hope you liked this tutorial. If you did, please click like and subscribe. And if you like more interesting tutorials, if you have any suggestions, please leave it in the comments and have a great day.